Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another creative cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I got a great question from a viewer asking me about transfer modes inside of Media Composer and Symphony. And I believe his name is Jeppe. And Jeppe asks, Hi Kevin, thanks a lot for the great Avid Media Composer tutorials that you're doing. I have one major request though, and I think I speak on behalf of many editors when I ask you to do a tutorial on layer blending, or as it's commonly referred to as transfer modes, inside of Media Composer 6. I'm currently on Media Composer 5.5 and I do a lot of layer blending. It's part of every project that I do and I'm currently using a great free plugin to do my work. The problem is, is that it is a 32-bit plugin and therefore cannot be used inside of Media Composer 6 because Media Composer 6 is 64-bit. So what do I do? Can I use 3D Warp or the Paint Effect? I cannot make this work. I'm about to upgrade, but I'm going to put that on hold until I can find a solution for this, and I might even consider switching NLEs. Okay, Jeppe, don't get out of control. Don't be switching nonlinear editing systems. There is a way to do this inside of Media Composer 6, but it's not a way that you might think. Let's get into Symphony, and I'm going to show you how you're going to do this inside of Media Composer 6 and inside of Symphony 6. Okay, so let's Alt-Tab into Avid's Symphony, obviously Command-Tab for all of my Mac friends out there. And we're just going to start in Symphony because I happen to be using Symphony, so why not start there? It's a great place to start. And like I said, transfer modes inside a Media Composer in Symphony is not something that's native to the application. We do need to use a third-party plugin to do it, much like Jeppe was doing. He was using a third-party plugin. Now, the only catch is I know you're probably saying, well, you know what, I'm not going to go on. I'm not going to be, you know, spending this money to buy this nonlinear editing application that i got to spend more money, you know, to get third-party plugins. Well, hold your horses. We don't need to spend any extra money on third-party plugins. I know you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Kev, what do you mean by that? Well, let me tell you. When you make your Media Composer purchase, you're going to get free with that Avid Effects. Avid Effects is Boris Red 5 tailored for Media Composer 6. Now, for all my Symphony friends out there, when you make your Symphony purchase, it's version 6, you're going to get not only Avid Effects, but you're also going to get Boris Continuum Complete 8. So that is how you're actually going to be doing the transfer modes. Like I said, these are both included. For Symphony, you get BCC 8 and Avid Effects. For Media Composer Editors, you get Avid Effects. So I'm going to show you how you're going to do this technique in both, uh, both situations. So let's start with Symphony. Like I said, we're in Symphony. I'm going to use a technique that I do all of the time, and I used to have to go to After Effects to do this. And don't get me wrong, love After Effects, but you know, obviously you have to export all your stuff out of Media Composer, go and After Effects, do your work, render it out, come back into Media Composer. And you know, it does take some time to do that when the work can be done right from within your Symphony timeline. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to open the graphics folder here and I need some footage to work with. So I'm just going to come in. I picked out a pretty cool shot here from my motocross stock footage right here. It's a pretty cool shot of the motocross guy coming around the corner here. Very nice. And what I want to do is I want to get in and I want to uh, I want to add a transfer mode. What I want to do is I want to make this kind of like a sepia tone, but not sort of a, a sepia tone color, sort of that brownish color. I'm going to make it sort of a bluish color. And really, blue is going to be the primary color in the entire shot. And how we do this technique uh, is actually with transfer modes. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So let's take this clip. I just sort of selected a range about 17 seconds long. I'm going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to drop this into the timeline. And what I'm going to do is create a new timeline inside of the graphics bin. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to desaturate this shot. So what we're going to do is hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 for all my Mac friends out there. And what we're going to do is just come all the way down to the image section here, right here, image. And we're just going to simply select the color effect. I'm going to take it, I'm going to drag it and drop it right down here onto the shot. We're going to step into effects mode now. Now you'll all know that my shortcut for effects mode is Shift and Y on the keyboard. If you don't have effects mode map, no problem. You can simply find it right here or you can find it right over here at the top of your timeline. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in to the color effect and once we have it up, what we want to do is just simply remove all the saturation. Now most people think it's going to be up here at the top. It's actually not. Located about midway down underneath the chroma adjust. We're simply going to grab saturation, just drag it all the way out. We don't need to add any keyframes here because we want the saturation to be gone for the entire shot. And what we're going to do now is I need a blue solid to, uh, to use a transfer mode on. So what I normally do in these cases is I'll come up to my title. I'll simply say new title. 
And we'll just create a standard title inside of the title tool here. We'll just grab the background color here. We'll just select blue. That's looking pretty good. We'll just save this out. We'll call it blue appropriately enough. There we go. We'll just stick it into graphics here. There we go. And what I'm going to do actually is export this. The reason being is because I don't want to actually use a title here. And we'll just call this, not sure, we'll just call it title blue. Uh, because what happens is once you start applying effects to, technically a title is an effect. And once you start applying effects to other effects, it gets to be a bit tricky. So I always just like to create just a still frame of what I had here. And I'm just going to import the blue title here. There we go. And it's just going to look exactly the same as what we just had. I'm just going to delete that title. There we go. Blue. Very nice. We're going to take this and we're going to create a new layer by simply hitting Control and Y on Windows. Command and Y for all my Mac friends out there. We're just going to make sure we're editing onto layer 2. I'm just going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to mark the entire duration of this clip. And I'm going to hit B on the keyboard. Now what we need to do is we need to apply the effect and how we find it is very simple. Like I said, once you make your Symphony purchase, you're going to get an email that's going to give you the license codes for Avid Effects and for Boris Continuum Complete 8. And what you're going to do is you're going to navigate up to BCC 8 and you're going to find it simply right here under Key and Blend. You'll find Composite right here, Composite also known as Transfer Modes. I'm going to take Composite, I'm going to drag and drop it right down here on the shot and you're going to see immediately now we have a very interesting look going on. Not quite the look that I want. But what I'm going to do here is step back into effects mode again. Shift and Y is the shortcut for me. Effects mode again located right there or at the top of your timeline right over here. I know you're probably getting sick of hearing me say it, but I want to make sure that anybody that happens to be tuning into my tutorial for the first time always knows that. And you'll see that once we're inside of the effects editor, if you navigate right down here, right below compare, now compare is actually pretty cool because I can say, you know, show me a compare and I can see what this layer looked like before and after. You'll see it's just blue here. And what's actually going on here is that I'm looking at the mix. So what it's doing is it's taking this layer and it's mixing it with the layer below using a hard light transfer mode. Now in this case, I don't want to use hard light. I just want to use a simple overlay just like that. Now I know you're looking at that going, wow, that looks awful. That actually looks worse than it did before. Ah, but bear with me. What we want to do now is we actually want to come up and we just want to adjust the apply mix. And we're just going to set that down at about 20. And you can see that we now have a very, very cool look going on. Now let's say we hypothetically wanted to throw, oh, I don't know. Let's say we wanted to throw titles over top of this. We wanted to blur the background out. Well, that's no problem either. What we can do is simply again, come, in, come back and hit control and eight. On the keyboard, we're going to come back down to image. And this is, of course, included inside of Media Composer and Symphony. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to double click on this effect. And you're going to see that the effect opens up. And I can see the layer that the effect is applied to. And what I'm going to do is simply just grab the focus here. Actually, it's blur effect. I'm just going to drag it and drop it right down on this shot. Again, step into effects mode here. And let's come in and let's blur this out here. What I'm going to do first of all is just come back to the color effect here and let's see, I just want to zoom out here. There we go. Perfect. Because you'll see that I don't have the uh, magnifying glasses inside of this effect here. So all I'm going to do is simply just select the area that I want to blur just like such and take a look at that. We now have something Now that's obviously a little bit too much here. So maybe we'll just set this to be like five and five. Very nice. And you can see now what we have, I'll just double click on that effect layer here. I'm just going to render this out as I now have a very cool background look created using the overlay transfer mode with Boris Continuum Complete 8 free with Symphony 6 and with a few standard effects inside of Symphony. And take a look at that. Very nice. Okay, so now the question is, how do we do the same technique for all of you Media Composer editors that don't have access to Boris Continuum Complete 8 and are going to want to create this using Avid Effects? Okay, so let's just come back in and let's just remove that blue layer because we're not going to need that anymore. I'm just going to remove the effects here that are on this shot as well. And I don't even need any of these extra video or audio layers here. There we go. We just need the one layer. Now, like I said, this technique is going to be for all you Media Composer editors out there. So what we're going to do for Media Composer editors, like I said, you're going to have access to Avid Effects absolutely free when you make your Media Composer 6 purchase. So what we're going to do is take Avid Effects. I'm just going to grab the standard Avid Effects filter. We're just going to drag and drop it down onto the shot in our timeline. I'm going to press Shift and Y again to step into effects mode. And I'm just going to launch the Avid Effects user interface. Now, you're going to see here that we actually have two layers, even though we actually only applied this to one. You'll see that right now, if I turn the eyeball off, nothing is on video two. So I can actually simply just delete that layer. What I'm going to do is turn the eyeball back on. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to add a blue solid to this layer. And we're going to add the blue solid simply by clicking on the Add Color Media button right there. And you'll see that it's I'm now actually can be prompted as to what color I want to add. And of course, I want to add blue. Now what we're going to do is I'm just going to turn that blue off because we're going to need to add an effect to this layer here. What we're going to do is navigate up to Filters. We're going to come to Colors and Blurs. And all I'm going to do is simply select Hue, Saturation, and Lightness. Once I do, what we're going to do is come over to Saturation that you can see right here. I'm just going to get rid of Saturation. And what I want to do is set the interpolation to be constant. So that way, everything is black and white the entire way. Very nice. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come back up to that color solid here. And of course, we're just going to turn it on. And what we're going to do is simply come over to Composite. Now you'll remember Composite is exactly what the same effect was called inside of Boris Continuum Complete 8. So I'm simply going to select Composite. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the Apply mode and I'm simply going to say Use an Overlay. Now see in this case again it doesn't look very good. It's actually kind of you know really really blurred out. So what we're going to want to do in this case is head on back on over to Position. I know that sounds a little bit odd, but located inside a position is the opacity. Let's put the opacity down at about 20. And what we're also going to want to do again is just switch our interpolation to be constant. And what do we have? We have the exact same look now inside of Avid Effects that we had inside of Boris Continuum Complete 8. And of course, if I wanted to, I could, you know, select the video. I could come back up to filters. I could come down to blurs. I could select Gaussian blur. And like I said, you know, we could put this, you know, again at, you know, something like five to really give us the exact same look we had before. Now, here's where things are really cool. And here's where, you know, you might actually want to use Avid Effects instead of Boris Continuum Complete 8, even though you have access to both. What I'm going to do is simply say apply. And what most people think here, and I'm just going to zoom back in on this shot here. I'm just going to close the effects editor here, press Shift F2. Let's just make sure here. We don't want to render. What we want to do is Shift F2. There we go, because we want to render this. We don't want to digitize. We want to render. And again, remember this shot is HD, and we've not only added a blur, but we've also added a transfer mode and a solid color inside of Avid Effects. So this is rendering, you know, pretty quickly here. Just a little bit longer than real time. Now, what's very cool about what I'm about to show you is the fact that you know the technique that we just did. You know, probably took I don't know you know, three to five minutes, you know, for me to explain, if you to get in and play around and, and come up with the look that you want, you know, would obviously take you a little bit longer. So how do we get in and how do we make this reusable? Well, let me show you what I'm going to do here. I'll actually just hit play here just so we can take a look at this. It looks very, very nice. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to step back into effects mode again. Shift and Y is my shortcut. Effects mode right here, right over here at the top of your timeline. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the actual effect itself, and I'm simply going to grab it and drag it and drop it right down into the graphics bin. And what I'm going to do is close the effects editor, and we're actually just going to, you know, let's delete the sequence in, you know, in its entirety. Just say goodbye. See you later. Okay? Well, I need to take that look because the client really loved it, and I need to use it somewhere else, even in a different project, you know, different sequence. doesn't even really matter. What I'm going to do is take a completely different shot. You know what I think I'm going to do here? I think I'm actually going to take a gliding shot just, you know, for kicks. And what I'm going to do is take this gliding shot here. I'll just select the entire shot here by hitting T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. I'll hit B to drop it into the graphics folder. And what I want to do is apply the exact same effect that I had just applied to the shot. Well, you'll remember, because I took that effect and I dragged it right over here into the graphics bin, if I take that effect and I drag it and drop it right back on there, guess what I now have? I now have the exact same effect applied here, ready to go. No rebuilding required. Just a simple drag and drop. Now again, a little bit longer than real time to render this out, but you'll see it's actually, it's about relative. This shot, you know, is about 13 seconds long. It's going to take about 18 seconds. I believe the other shot was about 17 seconds, and it took about 24 seconds. And guess what we have now? We now have the exact same technique done, simply with a drag and a drop. So even though transfer modes or composite modes are not, you know, native to Media Composer and Symphony, with the inclusion for absolutely free of Avid Effects for both Media Composer and Symphony and Boris Continuum Complete 8 for Symphony specifically, you have all of these great tools at your disposal, so there's no time like the present to upgrade and start using the current version of Media Composer and Symphony. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.